Hello everybody, I'm Jackie Glass. I'm Professor of Construction Management down at University College London. But I taught Rob uh, some years ago, let me not embarrass him this evening, um, I taught him some years ago at Loughborough when I was in civil engineering. So lovely to be back um, with you Rob, thank you so much for the introduction and the welcome up here this evening. Do you know what I'm going to ask you all to do first of all? I'm going to ask you all to stand, stand up please. Stand up. It is not, the purpose here is not to catch out the cameraman who is now panicking because he can't see me. I'm here. Hello. I'm going to ask you all, um, I might need some hands here, Rob. You can help me out with this. Hold that one and that one for me. Thank you very much. I know you come in useful one day, mate. Now, um, I'm going to ask you all to put your hands in the air. Lovely. Let's see those hands right up. And the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is bring your hands together in the normal way that you clasp them. If you're resting at work, for example, bring your fingers together, just weave them together. Got that? Lovely. Take notice of the order in which you've done so. Which thumb is on top? Which thumb's on top? Now take your hands away. Bring them back together, but put the thumbs and the fingers the other way around. How does it feel? Weird. 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 Okay. Now, let's just then get all this into perspective. We are talking about innovation in a construction industry which takes 10% of GDP, employs hundreds of thousands of people. I've just asked you to put your hands around a different way and you're freaked out. So... Let's just take a moment to think how difficult change is. Sit down, folks. Thank you so much. Play along with me. It's good fun. Thank you. Um, so, look, one of the programmes that I lead is called the Transforming Construction Network Plus. So we're part of a large uh, government investment in innovation in construction. So there are... Uh, £170 million pounds worth of a government investment and matched industry funding to try to kick-start change in a whole load of different places. Now, I'm an academic by background, but actually over the years I've probably worked on about £10 million pounds worth of different research and innovation projects with all sorts of businesses from contractors and consultants um, I've even had a go at changing, you know, um, uh, I'm just going to call them diggers, because otherwise you might know who I'm talking about. Um, the yellow kit that we use on site, we've had a go at making that more eco-efficient, etc. So there's not much innovation I haven't had a go at. Um, but obviously you know, as well as I do, we've got a lot of work to do. So government is behind this, and the way that we are funded through UK Research and Innovation is through the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund. So we're part of the Transforming Construction Challenge. And the second person who I might uh, uh, embarrass just a little bit tonight, Mike Pitts, is leaning very ably against a nice concrete column back there. And Mike is the Deputy Director of the Transforming Construction Challenge. So he has a responsibility to make sure that government funding is invested wisely. I'm not panicking at all here, as you can imagine. Um, but I'm representing then here today the idea that actually we can all contribute to this agenda. We can all do something in this space. And I think our, our speakers previous to me have outlined some of the ways this is happening. This is a slide that the director of the Transforming Construction Challenge shows to try to indicate the areas in which we might be working. And what you can see there is that it covers all areas of what we do. It covers everything from products through skills, there's uh, the idea of disruption through new market entrants, etc. But there is a clear recognition of both success and challenge within it. And importantly, quite interestingly, the idea of long-term targets and compelling stories. This is not an overnight thing. It's a long-term uh, investment. It's a long-term plan. But there's a lot of difficulties in there. And you know what? When we first started our project about a year and a half or so ago, um, everybody started to use the term or the phrase, we need to change the construction business model. You're laughing. It's a great phrase, isn't it? We need to change the construction business model. 
Nobody knows what it means. Everybody understands it differently. And so one of the first things that we did um, in collaboration with our colleagues at Imperial College was actually just draw together a very short digest, which is freely available on the website. I've put the links in everywhere for Rob for you to circulate. Um, because people want to understand, all right, if I'm going to change a business model, what's in a business model? When we say business model, what do we mean? Very elegant ringtone, that. I quite like that. Um, and so what we try to do is uh, very quickly digest the key literature that have been written across the world around business models and bring it into the construction sphere so that people could sort of start breaking this down and having a go at it. And it's so interesting this evening, isn't it, that we've actually already heard several things that are going on that we've already spotted in there. We've talked about people. We certainly talked about the idea of uh, collaboration because everybody that stands up shows us a slide with all the logos of the people they collaborate with. So we know it's important. And we know that knowledge and thinking and reflection is important. We've heard about networking and relationships already. And right at the top there, price point. Let's not rule price out of this. Let us be realistic and pragmatic. Money is part of this. So when you next speak to somebody about business models, have a think about this and have a think about the purpose that you've heard from some of the folks here speaking this evening because actually one of the things that they're quite ably um, you know they're ably to, are able to articulate is their value proposition and if you can match your value proposition to the market demand that you want to target that i would argue is where we need to get to but this is really hard Okay, because a lot of the stuff here is changing around us. Um, we've heard about 3D printing this evening. Um, we haven't even really touched on the digital transformation that's going on. And we know that companies across the UK in our sector are absorbing technologies of one sort or another into their businesses. Um, let us just say charitably at varying rates. Yes. Um, we did some work and picked up some on some work that had been done uh, in the last couple of years, which was to examine some rather interesting companies. These are not British companies. Um, one or two of them operate here um, and are able to come talk. We've had uh, specific conversations with Project Frog, for example. But these are case studies of companies in the States. And these companies have changed either all or parts of their business model to try to transform. And the, this is the other phrase that we often hear from people, we want to transform. I want you to be really careful when you use that word. This is not a word to be bandying about. We could talk about reform, yeah, that's okay, a little bit of change, but when we talk about transforming, we're talking about utterly changing things. Reinvention, remodeling, complete reconfiguration. So be careful when you say we're transforming our business. You're nodding at the back there. Um, be careful when you talk about, you say you're, we are transforming our business. Because actually, uh, we could come along and ask you some pretty tough questions about whether that's the truth. But these companies all have something to offer. And I'd invite you to download that paper, have a quick look at it. Um, DBC was a spin-off company from a main contractor and they actually decided we need to do things in a different way, we need to get our process flow much better, we need to invest in digital, but you know what, we're not going to do it in our main business, <laughs> we're going to experiment off-site, we're going to do it separately, we want to control the risks. You can see that mentality playing out in our boardrooms, can't you? Um, they did it, Katera is a different, they went for complete vertical integration from design through to manufacture, and Project Frog is more of an integrated digital delivery. These case studies exist for you to have a look at, share and discuss. But actually some of this, um, you know, one of the things we do as academics is we have the privilege to dig back into thought leaders and what they've done over the years. And uh, one of my colleagues previously from uh, UCL, who's now at Sussex, Andy Davis, did this work 14 years ago. It's such a long time ago, 
but it's still relevant. One of the things he did was actually look at companies, and he actually looked at, I think it was some IT companies, a range of different sectors, and he was looking at this idea of how do you move to integrated solution offering. And without going down the sort of the, <laughs> the idea of talking about Carillion and Interserve and you know, um, how we can integrate our companies, I'm not going to say do that, clearly. But what I am going to say is this thinking has been around a long time. But it's updating. And the thing that Andy missed all those years ago was the digital piece. And so uh, Jennifer White uh, produced this paper for Project Management Journal a little while ago. And actually what she wanted to do was take the idea of business transformation, digital business transformation, and try to help people to understand and categorise and classify what we mean when we talk about <coughs> digital transformation in a business. So again, we're talking about research which is trying to look at businesses, see what they do and learn from it. I want you to look at the far right of the slide. I want you to notice two words, digital twin. And I'm going to ask you now honestly, how many people have heard of the phrase digital twin? Put your hand up, please. About half, fantastic. How many people could confidently tell me what it is? Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you, just hands up. That's very good. How many people have uh, got one, got one underway, working on one? Hands up. You are so rare in the UK. Congratulations. Look, digital twin is something you need to get into. You need to understand this. There's so much going on on it. This is really exciting. So when we're talking about transforming our construction industry, we've got to transform all the way through the business model and this means all the way through the project delivery system. And it means all the way from design and ideation, all the way through to delivery. And I'm, you know, one of the research projects that I haven't got time to talk about tonight, Rob, is all about um, drones and robotic construction, etc., and autonomous, you know, autonomous robotics, which is hugely risky, hugely experimental but we are working now with main contractors who want to get the stuff on site. So things are changing fast, but if you have not got your systems digitally integrated and you're not thinking about digital twin now, I'm really encouraging you to start thinking about that really seriously. I guess that, you know, the, the honest opportunity to speak with you this evening gave me a chance to reflect. It gave me a chance to reflect on collaborating with all sorts of different companies in our industry for a very long time. Um, and it's, it's been an interesting process. We often talk about innovation coming through. And I, I love the presentation on employee ideas because actually, do you know what? That's the same for research ideas, okay? So the number of times that we take time to undertake a research project but it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't get picked up, the company changes its mind, we feel it's lost. It's as disappointing as the employees must have felt in those statistics we heard at the outset of the evening. So from a research point of view, if you would like to make use of the researchers within the UK construction and built environment community, I can only recommend to you these steps for really growing innovation um, it, you do have to start with positive relationships and very often we have projects with multiple industrialists involved, multiple, entire supply chains. The biggest project I ran over years, we had entire supply chains collaborating with us. So the relationships between yourselves is super important. You have to be able to communicate what you want to do and this obviously includes purpose mission, values, and you have to be frank about this. The shared goals is critical. And one of the things that I think I, I would really, um, I think Stephen mentioned it about challenging yourself and bringing other people into the conversation rather than creating echo chambers where you're just hearing the same voices all the time is to bring other people in. And it's gonna be hard and you're gonna cry and it's gonna be really difficult, but it's worth it. 
And then you get to do really nice things like this, because you get to stand up and say, one of our researchers saved a retailer £5 million in her work. One of them went on to be the youngest fellow of the ICE, the ICE E ever. This is about making use of the intellectual capital that we have within universities. We are apparently, universities are the one thing that are so critical to making places prosperous. So here we are in Manchester, you have a choice of universities to work with. I would seriously recommend it. Um, if you want to hear more about Network Plus, what we're doing, we carry on through this year, hopefully beyond. Um, we have a website, we have events. Please get in touch with us and keep on innovating. Rob, thank you.